on Salt Lake City. Thank you for your patience as we work through a couple of glitches. Uh, and welcome to the today's Salt Lake City Council formal meeting. The City Council has returned to holding our meetings remotely to help reduce the transmission of COVID-19 due to the rate of the COVID-19 cases in the city and elsewhere. This is a precautionary measure for the safety of the public and city employees and is based on the latest report from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. We are continuing to monitor the situation in advance of each meeting, and the council will return to hybrid and or in-person meetings when appropriate. We're truly grateful for the public's patience, but most importantly, we are glad you are joining us today. Thank you. Uh, first item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. We will begin with a moment of silence as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance, and when we are done, we will return our audio back on. Thank you, and welcome, and I will go through the public meeting rules. Majority of you have heard these before, but we'd like to uh, remind ourselves of these rules of decorum and uh, every time we meet. So welcome to everyone who has joined us tonight for the public comment opportunities today. We are accepting your comments through WebEx, and for those who are only options to call in, staff will be monitoring a separate telephone line. Before we begin moving through our agenda, I want to mention and review our rules of decorum. These are guidelines that the City Council has always had in place to help our meetings progress in an orderly, civil, efficient way. These help us move through the agenda and give everyone the opportunity to voice their opinions without feeling intimidated. The word is respect. In order to achieve this, our rules of decorum begin from the moment you arrive into our virtual meeting. We respect all points of view and we welcome new insights. While giving your comments, please be respectful. Avoid yelling, profanity, or making racial slurs, obscenity, or defamatory remarks. If you use profanity during your comments, your line will be muted or you will be asked to stop. And if any comments reach a level of disrespect, you will forfeit your opportunity to address the council tonight. If you feel the need to use profanity to express your point, you're welcome to email council members or call our comment line. In addition, our staff will request your, for your name during their WebEx registration process. To limit disruptions, your name cannot include a message or violate our rules of decorum. If your name doesn't meet this requirement, then our staff will make contact with you to gather this information for you, uh, from you. For those joining us, the WebEx, please monitor your chat in case we try to reach you. Delaney Silman from our staff is helping to moderate the WebEx portion of our meeting and will be messaging with attendees to coordinate any questions with your registration. Staff is handling a number of tasks. Please limit messages to technical issues and minimal changes to your registration. If you'd like to send a comment, please feel free to mail us at PO Box 145. 476 Salt Lake City 84114. Email us at council.comments at slcgov.com or call us at 801 535 7654. This brings us to item A4, uh, which is approval of the work session and formal meeting minutes of Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. I will look for a motion. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. I have a motion. I have a motion from my Councilwoman Fowler and the second from Councilmember Mono. Any questions? Any discussion? Okay, I'll roll call the uh, members. Councilmember Pui. Yes. Councilmember Petro Eschler. Yes. Councilmember Wharton. Yes. 
Council Member Valdemoros is uh, absent at this time. Council Member Mono. Yes. Council Member Fowler? Yes. And I'm a yes. That passes unanimously. Now we'll move on to our uh, item B, public hearing. We will give our public hearing process. Taylor Hill on our staff will call out the names of those who wish to comment and unmute the lines. Once we open public comment, Taylor will announce three names at a time so that people can have some notice to, and be prepared to speak. So I just want to check my spot. When it is your turn to speak, Taylor will say your name, unmute your line, and you may begin. Please state your name and the two-minute timer will start. At the two-minute mark, the host will announce time and your microphone will be muted. If you are unable to finish your comment, please refer to your chat screen. Our staff will post our contact information. If you do not wish to speak, please message our staff to let them know. And when the host states your name, please let us know you are here to listen. Our first public hearing includes three grant applications, items B1 through B3, that are being heard as one public hearing. Now, before we begin taking comments, I will first turn the time over to Sylvia Richards, Council Staff Policy Analyst, to give us a short introduction. Sylvia? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The city applies for and receives grants which help to support and fund some city programs. Each grant application is reviewed and then receives a public hearing, which gives the public an opportunity to comment on them. Tonight, there are three grants. First is the Salt Lake County Corridor Preservation Fund Grant, 400 South between 550 West and 600 West, which would fund the purchase of 0.174 acres of property on 4 South between 550 to 600 West to preserve a full block as a transit corridor, a second parcel of property owned by the RDA immediately adjacent to the first parcel will be contributed to the project to secure the necessary right of way. Second is the Marathon Petroleum Foundation Thriving Communities Youth City Transportation Solutions Grant, which would fund the purchase of two 14 passenger vans to transport youth participants from neighborhood elementary schools to the Youth City Northwest Recreation Center for after school programming. Third is the Mental Health First Responders Grant Increased Capacity for Employee Assistance Program, which would fund the expansion and capacity of the city's existing employee assistance program to assist first responders in a one year pilot program. Um, two clinicians would increase their hours of availability to provide on-site, in-person, phone, and vi virtual counseling, particularly um, emergency services for individuals who may be, excuse me, in crisis. And that is all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sylvia. And Taylor, please start our first public comment. Uh, I'll, sorry, Council Chair, Taylor will be hopping on in a minute. I'll just say the first name and then pass it on to her. Uh, first, we'll have George Chapman. If George, if you'll give me a second. Sorry about that. Wrong, wrong unmute button. George, 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 George. We seem to be having a small issue with the call lines. One second. Okay, uh, we are going to try and unmute George again. 
George, you're now unmuted. 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 Okay, it looks like we're having the same issue. Give me one sec. And council members, thank you for your patience. We have a number of people out with COVID. And so people um, are doing different jobs than they usually do. And we're having a number of um, different running from one assignment to another. So apologies. No apologies necessary. We've now called in the experts and the experts are stumped. So they're dealing with the telephone line. Um, let's see if they can switch and um, do the um, computer line. If there's anyone there on the computer line to speak until we can get that figured out. Um, so it looks like George is the only one here to speak for this item, so. Okay, Council, one thing you could do is leave this hearing open and try to move on to something that involves um, uh, speakers who are signing in through the web uh, as opposed to the telephone line. The telephone line is failing us. We could go over just to new business and talk about that one appointment of the Inland Port Board. Okay. And then finish business. So we'll do that. Okay. We're moving on to item E, new business, which is a resolution, the first item E1, which is a resolution to appointment to the Utah Inland Port Authority Board. And I will look for a motion to appoint. Council member Petruesser. Um, Mr. Member Chair, Collins. I would move that we um, adopt the resolution. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? So all in favor say yes, and I'll just do a roll call. Council member Pui. Yes. Council Member Petroestro? Yes. Council Member Horton? Yes. Council Member Von Walsh is not present. Council Member Mono? Yes. Council Member Fowler? Yes. And I'm a yes that passes unanimously. Congratulations. Always muting myself. Council uh, item number F, unfinished business. Resolutions, person's amendment, resolution 31 of 2021 relating to the state infrastructure bank loan to the city. I look for a motion. 
Mr. Cherry moved that the council adopt the resolution amending resolution 31 of 2021 relating to the state infrastructure bank loan. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion from council member Fowler and a second from council member Mono. Is there any discussion? All in favor, I'll be asking for a yes. Council member Pui. Yes. Council member Petro Eschler. Yes. Council member Wharton. Yes. Council member Mono. Yes. Council member Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes, that motion passes. And Please council members, uh, Mr. Chapman will be joining us via WebEx since the telephone line isn't working and he was our only commenter. Okay, we'll, we'll finish this one item and then we'll come back to that. So item number two, ordinance establishing the city's designated water service area. I look for a motion. Mr. Cherry moved that the council adopt the ordinance. A second. Second. I have a uh, first uh, a motion by Councilmember Fowler, second by Councilmember Petro Esser. Is there any discussion? All right, I'll roll call the votes. Say yes. Councilmember Pui. Yes. Councilmember Petro Esser. Yes. Councilmember Wharton. Yes. Councilmember Mono. Yes. Councilmember Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes, that motion passes. So we'll move on back to uh, the comments at this time. And Cindy? Uh, it looks like it might be better to go ahead with public comment, the public comment section to see if we can get some of those people taken care of, assuming there's someone in the queue. Okay, that is. All right, we can move. We can move on to the public comments. So you're talking about George first, and that public comments for B one through B three. I'm not sure if he's with us yet. Looks like he has been able to join the meeting, Taylor. Just so you know, he's there as caller user seven. So we could do budget amendment number five public hearing if that's okay with you mr chair and then we could move on to general comments okay that's okay we'll do that all right thank you thank you great okay george you are now on mute. yes oh can you hear me now yes yes oh great <laughs> okay um on budget amendment five, the $400,000 should go to public safety overtime in neighborhoods hosting homeless shelters and providing walking police patrols to show that homeless shelters are not going to impact neighborhoods. And it would also decrease um, negative attitudes towards homeless shelters. Uh, police protect homeless from the criminals that target and use the homeless. And if the Ramada overflow increases community area beds, more security and police are required, including walking patrols. Uh, narcotics detection dogs should be used in the area and at the entrance so that the shelter doesn't increase drugs in the neighboring communities like the other shelters did. And the $3 million uh, for switch point, uh, that will require a rezone and you shouldn't be doing 1Z, 2Z rezones. They should be uh, all airport area influence uh, areas should be able to have housing. Uh, and again, the tennis bubble collapsed due to a generator not operating and one of the blowers not working and it collapsed twice. And this shows that maintenance should be given higher priority when spending money on projects. Those are my comments on budget amendment five. Thank you, George. And Taylor, was George our only commenter? 
on that hearing yes so you can close that hearing and refer it to a future meeting date and then you can continue with the regular public comment section Ms. mr chair wasn't that supposed to be for the grant applications so we also have a public hearing for the budget amendment right right I I'm think sorry. George is commenting on on the on the budget number five. Was there any was there any, and we can and uh, I'll look for a motion on that one. I just wanted to make sure because of the confusion that George didn't also want to comment on the grant applications. Thank Before. you, Council Member. Sorry about that. Just because George typically would comment on those. Um, yeah, so it looks like he signed up for both. So. And was he the only commenter for both the grants B1 through B3 and B4? Correct. Is he still on the line? Yes. Would you like to hear his comment for the other one now? Yeah, well, here is comments for items B1 through B3, and then we'll do a motion for those two, and then we'll do a motion for budget amendment number five. Okay. George, you're unmuted. Okay, first of all, thank you to the staff. I know it's complicated, and I appreciate their efforts. Uh, I'm against the Salt Lake County Quarter Preservation Fund grant application for Fort South to preserve a full block as a transit quarter. That implies that a rail line is planned and that requires almost $100 million in local taxpayer contribution. In other words, if you start this process and you get the money, you're gonna be pushed into spending uh, $100 million in local taxpayer contribution. And I think there are better ways to spend local taxpayer money, especially $100 million. That's a big cost. We still haven't decreased drug use and crime around uh, the homeless shelters and affordable housing is still lacking in this city. If we really have $100 million to spend, it should not go to a 400 South rail line. Please don't go for the grant application for the 400 South uh, buying the whole block as a transit quarter. Those are my comments on the grant applications. Thank you, George, and thank you for both sets of comments, and thank you for your patience uh, in uh, this time. So we have two items out there. We have items B1 to B3, which are the three grant applications, and I'll look for a motion for those items. I move that the council close the public hearing and refer, refer items B1 through B3 to a future consent agenda for motion. For action. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Puy and a second from Councilmember Fowler. Any discussion? And I look for, uh, I'll do a roll call for yes. Councilmember Puy. Yes. Councilmember Petzl-Ressler. Yes. Councilmember uh, Orton. Yes. Councilmember Mono? Yes. Councilmember Fowler? Yes. And I'm a yes with Councilmember Valdemoros absent, and that passes unanimously. And now on to item B4, which is budget amendment number five. I will look for a motion on that one. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and adopt an ordinance amending the FY 2021-2022 final budget of Salt Lake City for Ida, only for items as shown on the motion sheet. I have a motion from Councilmember Fowler. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Fowler, second from Councilmember Petro Esler, any discussion on this item? Um, can I just confirm, Mr. Chair, that this actually 
does close out the entire budget amendment number five. Is that accurate? You are correct, Council Member Mono. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? So I'll look for a roll call, Council Member Pui. Yes. Council Member Petrasser? Yes. Council Member Wharton? Yes. Council Member Mono? Yes. Council Member Fowler? Yes. And I am a yes. Council Member Valle Morris is absent at this time. That passes unanimously. Moving on to item C, potential actions items. There is none. Comments? Item D, any questions for the mayor from the city council? All right, mayor, you're off the hook here. I have one. Okay, council member Wharton. Uh, mine's not a question, but I just want to um, thank the mayor for um, using the emergency powers that she did have to try to protect um, our students in schools and um, our teachers and administrators. And um, I, I'm glad that, that you issued that order and I was happy to support it. Um, I wish there was more that we could do going forward, but I do appreciate you doing what you could when you could. Thank you, council member, and thanks to all of the city council for upholding that emergency declaration and extending it until spring break. And um, we got through nearly a half of the school year with greater safety for our students and teachers. So well worth it. Thank you for your support. And uh, just to kind of dovetail on that, that's my awards. Thank you very much. And thank you, as always, for participating in our meetings. So this leads us to the comments to the city council. And do we have anyone out there on the phone or is it all going to be coming through the WebEx at this time? Do we know, Cindy? Should all, all WebEx. Yep. Okay. So let me read through the other my little spiel here on the comments and the respect. We're now at the general comments portion of our agenda for comments about general topics and items that were not scheduled for a hearing tonight. We went over the city council rules of decorum earlier, and those rules apply here as well. We are accepting your comments through WebEx, and for those who uh, WebEx right now because we can't get you through the phone line. Delaney Silman from our staff is helping to moderate the meeting and can message with attendees if you need to coordinate. Taylor Hill and our staff will be calling names of those who wish to comment and unmuting their lines. Taylor will announce three names at a time so that people can be prepared to speak. When it's your turn to speak, Taylor will say your name, unmute your line, and you will really begin. Please state your name and the two minute timer will start. At the two minute mark, the host will announce time and your microphone will be muted. If you're unable to to finish your comments, please refer to the chat screen. Our staff will post your contact information. Taylor? Thank you, Council Chair. Good it looks morning. like we have five people here to speak. Um, the first of which will be Polly Hart, followed by Janet Hemming, and then Dimitri Vallejos. Polly, you're now unmuted. Thank you. On September 14th last year, Mayor Mendenhall held a press conference to declare a pause for phase two of the Foothills Trails implementation. The goal was, in her words, quote, to put the environment first and to work with environmental consultants, end quote. Well, I am here to tell you that the pause is not a pause. Parks and Public Land staff never stopped moving forward to realize phase two. During that presser in September, Trails Project Specialist Tyler Fonero laid out the administration's process moving forward. The environmental consultant would study the biology, geology, and archaeology, known as the ologies, before any further trail planning would happen. 
studying the ologies first is considered best practices in the trail building industry across the board. Everyone does them first, but you know who doesn't? Salt Lake City. Two months after the mayor's presser, I went for a hike with the board chair from the nonprofit Trails Utah. He told me that he had, at that time, recently been out with two members of the trail staff and that the three of them were flagging trails on Wire Mountain and Mount Van Cott, which are part of the allegedly paused phase two. So, the consultants had barely started the environmental groundwork for phase two when staff was already out quietly aligning trails with a biased member of the public. What is being sold as a pause to reprioritize the protection of the environment is neither. The work, it turns out, never stopped, and the trails will be aligned long before staff ever sees the publicly funded environmental report that they are supposed to be using as a guide to align those very trails. I cannot imagine a better way to secure the public's money and trust. All right, and next we will hear from Janet Hemming, followed by Dimitri Vallejos, and then Hillary Jacobs. Janet, you're now unmuted. Distinguished officials, I am Janet Hemming, Chair of the Yale Crest Neighborhood Council. I come tonight with an urgent plea. Please stop the destruction and decline of the Miller Bird Refuge and Nature Park in Yale Crest, which this city manages. To accomplish this, I am asking for a one-year moratorium, which would, one, stop the city from cutting hundreds of trees and saplings annually. We estimate we've lost 2,400 trees and saplings since 2014. To our knowledge, none have been replaced. End the use of all poisonous chemicals and herbicides, including Tordon, which is found in Agent Orange, all glyphosate-based products, or ones that aren't approved for a bird refuge, all have been used in the past. Three, permanently fix a sprinkler system, which constantly breaks because it was installed of all things under or near the very trails that bikes ride on and people and dogs walk on. Because of this faulty design, sprinkler heads break frequently and worse, they don't even reach the vegetation and trees that need the precious water. Fourth, bring back the birds. A new Tracy Aviary report suggests the bird population in the park does not have a richness of urban or riparian species. We have had numerous conversations and, and meetings with public land since October, including a two hour community forum just last Thursday with a high ranking public lands official. The answers we received to some of our most important questions were, I don't know, I don't have the data. It was repeated several times. We want answers. We want a city that will protect and preserve this precious urban park. Mayor Mendenhall and Councilman Dugan, I know you support urban forestry. Please, please help us. Thank you. All right, and next, next we'll hear from Dimitri Vallejos, followed by Hillary Jacobs, and then George Chapman. Dimitri, you're now unmuted. Thank you, uh, staff, to, to, to the staff for uh, all your time and the patience in uh, getting this meeting going, uh, as well as to the council members. Uh, I greet you as the director of a local nonprofit that is known as Decriminalized Nature Salt Lake City. Uh, we are a chapter, a local chapter of a national organization that is focused around decriminalizing sacred plants and fungi. Uh, if you look in the comments um, section or like the emails that you guys receive from the general public, <clears throat> you can see an email that I forwarded you guys regarding our primary positions as well as uh, some of the framework in reference to uh, the House bill that was dropped yesterday, uh, 0167, in regards to the formation of a psychedelic task force for the state of Utah that is in, ongoing in the current legislative session. So in unison with those efforts, we are wanting to work with local municipalities and local leaders to help educate our community councils and city council members, uh, county council members included, uh, in regards to the efficacy and the importance of uh, utilizing sacred plants and fungi such as mushrooms or ayahuasca or other culturally based plant medicines in 
uh, Coalition for the, the Health and Primary Wellness of our community. Uh, mainly, I am here to just socialize the idea to you guys and to begin um, the conversation and open up the dialogue so that we can create a pathway and a framework for education within our within our community. Um, this would reach far into the uh, implications of mental health as well as uh, drug addiction and depression and, and suicide rates within the state of Utah. Uh, and being able to help our communities with healing. So um, I, I come here basically just as a formality to begin to socialize the idea and to form the relationship with you guys. Thank you, uh, that is all. All right, and next we will hear from Hillary Jacobs followed by George Chapman and then Jen Colby. Can you hear me? Hi. Um, my name is Hillary Jacobs. I'm a resident of Salt Lake City and a member of Save Our Foothills, a campaign dedicated to promoting environmental protection of Salt Lake City's beautiful foothills. When the City Council approved the 2021-2022 budget, you included a contingency clause that said public lands would need to meet certain criteria to allow the release of funds to move forward on trail construction following the pause instated by Mayor Mendenhall on September 14th, 2021. At a meeting Save Our Foothills had with Public Lands on December 10th, 2021, we asked Public Lands employees if they knew what the benchmarks or criteria were that they needed to meet for the release of the funds. We were met with blank stares. None of the city staff present was aware that they had to meet any requirements to release of these funds. How is it that no one in the Public Lands Department knows about this? Who is responsible for imparting this information to the Public Lands staff? Maybe you want to investigate why they are ignorant of this requirement that impacts their budget. Thank you very much. And next we will hear from George Chapman followed by Jen Colby. George, you're now unmuted. Okay, I'd uh, like the city to check with the Salt Lake Board of Education to see if the population district two really did go down uh, student enrollment would be a good check, and what I'm concerned about is residents may not have been counted due to uh, threats from the former president. And again, if this city keeps prioritizing apartments 30 to 1 over detached homes, the residents will continue to get poorer. Renters generally are 40 times poorer than homeowners. Please expand the area that this city devotes to single family homes and don't force residents to get poorer by forcing them into apartments. And I agree with everything Jan Hemming said, please stop cutting trees in Miller Park. They stabilize the banks and slopes. Uh, trees encourage birds and raptors and that will stop the devastation caused by squirrels and stop using the herbicide, which shouldn't be used in repairing quarters. This city owes Miller Park hundreds of big trees and finally, please ensure that the police department has policies in place to deter firing rifles in closed spaces without appropriate backstop. The typical, typical police long arm and bullets are too powerful to be used without significant danger to innocent civilians in the background. Thorough training and education should be required before police use rifles. Those are my comments. All right, and finally, we will hear from Jen Colby. Jen, you are now unmuted. Jen, you can go ahead. Okay, give me one second to troubleshoot with Jen.
Okay, I'm going to try one more time to unmute Jen. Jen, you're now unmuted. Okay, Jen, I am just going to send you our number to call the council office and also the email so that you can send your comments there and then the council members can see them that way. And Taylor, was Jen okay with that? Um, I messaged her and haven't got any response, so I will send it to her and also email her as a follow-up. Okay, we'll move on to the agenda, and if she messages back, let me know. So that closes our public comment period for this evening. Thank you, staff, for working through all those issues, and thank you to the residents of Salt Lake City for the patience of uh, working with the staff on that. Your comments are always welcomed. They're always appreciated, and uh, they're so vital for our, our work. So please keep it up. Moving on to item G is the consent side. So I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Mono and a second from Councilmember Fowler. Are there any discussion? No discussions. I look for a yes. I uh, have a roll call. Councilmember Pui. Yes. Councilmember Petzer Yes. Councilmember Wharton. Yes. Councilmember Mono. Yes. Councilmember Fowler. Yes. Councilmember Valdemoros is absent, and I am a yes. That passes unanimously. And I think, where are we? I just want to make sure, uh, Cindy, can we make sure that we went through everything on that agenda? Because we bounced around quite a bit. Council Chair, we're reviewing that really quickly, and we will let you know in a second. Sorry, it's been a little chaotic tonight. I think you are good. And Council Chair, I'll con confirm that the recorder's office does have on record that you need it through each item. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I appreciate everybody. Thank you for your uh, time and attention tonight and your engagement. Have a good evening. We are adjourned. Night. Night.